My name is Jonathan Goforth. Today we're going to talk about math questions and how to help you pass the real estate exam. For some reason, and I don't know why, most of us don't like math questions. And so that's why I pulled these out just to give a little more practice. We can concentrate on three questions. You might see questions very similar to these on your test. But first, if you would give this video a like and then subscribe. And here's why I want you to subscribe. If you're getting into real estate uh, right now and you're about to go take the test, all my other videos are what to do after, after you begin your real estate career. This is the beginning of the most awesome career ever. I've been a realtor for 25 years. It is the most lucrative, most wonderful career. But if you'll subscribe, then next to the word subscribe down here is a little bell icon. If you would turn that on so you get notified of future videos. Don't go look at my other videos yet. All I want you to do right now is concentrate on passing the test. Just pass the test. And so to do that, you're going to want to practice as many questions as possible. These math questions, I'm going to put links in the description of this video below, links to um, other test questions. So after you're done with this video, click on those links one by one and practice, practice, practice so you pass the test. The exam, this real estate test, is, is uh, comprised of two different components. You have the state section, the whole bunch of multiple choice questions, and these math questions fall into those. In addition to that category, you've got the national simulations. And so I have some examples of national simulation questions also below in the description. Make sure you practice those. It's a whole different kind of test question. And then after you pass the test, pick one of my videos and, and comment after you pass and say, I passed the test because it's just so exciting. Then come back and watch all my other videos. It will help you so much to have the most wonderful, successful real estate career. I think uh, videos for real estate training are so crucial because most real estate offices don't do the greatest job training their agents. And that's why uh, the success rate is so high for agents who pour themselves into training. So before we do this first question, I'm going to give you some advice. So a few things to help you pass this test. What's going to happen when you walk into the testing facility, um, they're going to give you a sheet of paper, scratch paper, and a pencil. Those are primarily there for these math questions, for you to uh, scribble on, play with the numbers, add up some things, do the math, and you're going to want to bring a calculator. You cannot have your phone at your desk. You can't do that. So you've got to have your own calculator, a real calculator. In order to pass the test, I want you to practice doing these math questions with your real calculator. Make sure the buttons work. We never use a real calculator anymore. So make sure uh, it's a, a really good calculator before you show up. The testing center might have their own calculators also, but in case they don't, bring your own calculator. Here's what I do. As you go through the exam questions, if you have no clue what the answer is, and it's just going to be a wild guess, pick one. Pick an answer before you go to the next question. And then on your scratch paper, write down that number. Uh, I want you to make a little short list of the questions you're totally guessing at so you can come back to these questions at the end of the test and try those again. But pick an answer. In case you run out of time, at least you have those answered. Because if you answer B on all of them, you're going to get a few of them correct, right? So do that on the side of your little sheet of paper. At the end, when you're finished with the test, you're going to give back the pencil. You're going to give back that sheet of paper. They collect that as you walk out. And then put a comment on one of my videos. I passed the test because it's encouraging for everyone else. All right, let's jump right into the first math question.
On this video, I'm gonna do three math questions. Now, what's kind of funny is most realtors don't like math. <laughs> it seems to be a common trait that almost all of us have. We just don't like math. But these three questions, you could easily see very similar questions, very similar to these on the real estate exam. But the very first question we're gonna do right now first you're going to love it. This it will be your favorite math question of all time. You're gonna use this every single time you sell a house. So let's, let's jump right into this first one. Uh, let's read it together. A house sold for $350,000 with a sales commission rate of 7%. The listing broker received 50% of the total commission and the selling broker received 50%. How much would the selling salesperson receive if the selling broker kept 30% and gave 70% to the salesperson? So there's a couple of terms in here. If you're brand new to real estate, you have a listing broker and a selling broker. The selling salesperson is the buyer's agent. So when you see that term in there, selling salesperson, that's the buyer's agent and the buyer's agent works for the uh, selling broker, which is the buyer's agent's broker. And so the listing broker and the selling broker, typically in this example, are gonna split the commission in a 50-50 split. In this case, the buyer's agent, who is that selling salesperson, is gonna keep 70% of the commission. And so the very first thing we're gonna do we're gonna find the total commission first. So let's find the total commission first. How do you do that? Well, this is what you're gonna do every time you sell a house. First, we're gonna take the sales price, $350,000 times 7%, which is, if you're using your calculator, 0 0.07. And so you take $350,000 times 0 0.07, and you get the total commission of $24,500. That's the total. But the listing broker gets 50% and the selling broker gets 50%. In this case, uh, we're gonna take it times half. So we take that commission, $24,500 times half, which is 0.5. And so each brokerage gets $12,250. Now, the salesperson gets to keep 70% of that $12,250. So you multiply 12,250 times 0.7, and you get $8,575. That is the amount of commission that the selling salesperson will get. And just like that, you've done a really good, pretty easy math problem. This will, you'll love that because you're going to do that every time you get to sell a house. The second question on this video to help you pass the test, let's read it together. If a borrower pays $2,100 in interest per quarter on a straight note of $140,000, the interest rate would be 8%, 14%, 6%, or 7%. So on a question like this, the first thing I want to talk about is what is a straight note? Now, this is why it's so important to practice lots and lots of questions, because this is where you're going to really learn. And so let's talk about what a straight note is, um, because it's important in this question. A straight note is a it's a it's a term loan uh interest only uh, a great example of a straight note is a construction loan a uh let's say let's say a six month construction loan that would be a straight note and at the end of the term all of the principal is due as a huge balloon payment at the end and then leading up to it you just have uh typically just interest until the term of the loan is finished that's a straight note. So let's read this question again. 
If a borrower pays $2,100 in interest per quarter on a straight note of $140,000, the interest rate would be. So the very first thing that you need to do, the, the one thing I want to see stand out in your mind is that $2,100 in interest per quarter. Per quarter. That's what needs to stand out because interest rates are done annually, not quarterly. So the first thing we're going to do is change the interest per quarter to an annual amount. And so how do you do that? Well, the math right here, we have $2,100 times 4. And that's going to give us the total amount for the year. $8,400 in interest per year. And so all we do is take $8,400 in interest divided by $140,000. And that gets us 6%. And so that's your answer. The third one down, 6%. But let's say, here's where I'm going to just give some practical advice uh, you may sit there with that question and you might think, you know what? I don't really know which one to divide by which one. Is it 140,000 divided by 8,400? So let's say you do that by mistake because you just, you're sitting there, you've got a little anxiety going on. And so you do that first, $140,000 divided by $8,400. And the answer to that is 16.67. Let's say you get that. Well, look at your choices. That's not an option. So you know that's wrong. And so divide it the other way. And you take the 8,400 divided by $140,000 and you get 6%. And then when you see the 6% is one of your options, you know that you got it correct. So what I would do on a question like this, check your work. This is what I tell my kids when we do math. Check your work. So right there, the very bottom line right there, take $140,000 times 6%. And what do you get? Well, thank goodness you get $8,400. And so you know 6% is the correct answer. Final answer. The final question for this video. Let's read it together. Lance sold his house and took back a note for $6,500 secured by a second deed of trust. He sold the notes for $4,875. This represents a discount of 15%, 20%, 25%, or 33%. So, the first thing we need to know how much is that discount? So let's figure that. So let's just read that question again together. Lance sold his house and took back a note for $6,500, secured by a second deed of trust. He sold the note for $4,875. This represents a discount of. And so let's figure out how much the discount is. And so that part's pretty easy. $6,500 minus $4,875, and the discount amount is $1,625. So, the question we need to answer is, what percentage of $6,500 is that $1,625? And so, we take the $1,625 divided by $6,500 equals 0.25, and that is 25%. So your answer is C, the third one down, 25%. But again, let's say you're sitting there with some stress, <laughs> and, and, and you sit there and you look at this question, and you think, I don't know what to divide what by. I'm going to totally get all these wrong. Well, let's say you screw it up. Let's screw this one up and do it backwards. And you, get, and you take right there, 
uh, below there to the bottom right, you do $6,500 divided by $1,625, and your answer is, is four. You get four. Well, look at your answer choices. Four is not an option. So you know, oops, I did it wrong. Let's try dividing it the other way. And that's where you come up with 25%. So if you get into this and you, you, you answer it with a, a wrong answer, you get an answer like there of four, don't stress out. Just do it the other way. Divide it by the other direction and you'll get the correct answer. These three questions are not super hard, but they're commonly missed. And so go through this video again. Spend a little bit of time, practice these, because there are not that many math questions on the real estate exam. If you get every single math question wrong, all of them, and you get everything else on the test correct, you're still going to pass the test. There's not that many math questions. So some of these math questions like these, if you can just get these correct, it's going to take so much pressure off the rest of the exam, you're going to end up passing it pretty easily because a lot of times people get frustrated with math. They're very stressed out. A math question comes on the screen and your mind just kind of shuts down. And now you can see how you work through it step by step until you get the correct answer. And so even if you come up with a wrong answer, which I'm showing you a common thing that happens on these last two questions, you come up with the wrong one because you divided one number by the wrong number. Now you know, just flip those numbers around and you'll get the correct answer. Thanks for watching this. Please subscribe to my videos and please give this video a like. And now that you're done with this one, make sure you go underneath, look at the description for a lot of links. Check out some other math videos. These fall under the state portion of questions. And in addition to the state portion, you're also going to have the national portion. The national portion is made up of simulations. It's a unique form of a question. And I've got quite a few links below where I've already made a variety of uh, national simulation examples to help you practice.